Hey everybody, so in this video we're going to be learning about mean absolute deviation, or MAD, which is a measure of variability that we can use in data sets. So there are basically three steps that we're going to have to follow um, in order to calculate MAD. The first is to determine the mean, which again is the average, of the data set. Once we have the mean, we're going to take each number in the data set and find the absolute value from the mean. So basically it's going to say, well, once we have our mean calculated, we're going to figure out how far each number in the data set is away from the mean. And we're going to see what that looks like. Um, and then lastly, once we have those distances, we are going to determine the mean of them. So we're starting with an average or the mean of the data set. We're figuring out, once we have that, how far apart the mean is from all of the data points, each one individually, and then we're going to take the mean of those distances. So let's jump in with this example. So shot putt is a track and field event that involves throwing a heavy ball. Michelle com uh, competes in this event, and her distances of her first five throws were shown to the right. So what we're going to do, step one, is to find the mean, or the average, of our data set. So all we have to do is add up all of our uh, numbers in the data set. So we're going to um, write um, an addition problem, and then we are going to divide by the number of, or the amount of numbers. There are five here, right? Just like we're used to taking for mean or average. So add them up, divide by five. This should give us a mean of 50 feet. Okay, so that's the first part. Um, on our table, we are going to use this to calculate the distance between the mean and each value. So the first throw they told us was 50 feet, then 48, 45, 50, and 57. Okay, so what we have to do is figure out how far apart each of these numbers are from the mean, which was 50. Well, how far away is 50 from 50? Zero. 48 is 2 away from 50. 45 is 5 away from 50. 50 is 0 away from 50. And 57 is 7 away from 50. That's the key that we need. Step 3 is to just take these 5 distances that we calculated, and we have to find the average or the mean of those. So let's see. So we have 0 plus 2 plus 5, plus 0, plus 7, and we're going to divide by the amount of numbers, which was 5. And if we do this, that should give us a mean absolute deviation of 2.8 for this one. So that is the MAD. Okay, let's see about trying it for Christina. So again, um, same thing, you have your 5 throws listed, we want you to pause the video and see if you can find the mean of that data set. Step one. Okay, so to find the mean, again, you add up all of the numbers in the data set and divide by the amount of numbers, so you divide by five. So uh, that actually gives us a similar, or the exact same mean as Michelle had, 50 feet. So we go back to our table and we're going to figure out how far all of her throws, so 48, 53, 51, 48, and 50, we're going to find out how far away those are from the mean, which was 50. Okay, so 48 is 2 away from 50. 53 is 3 away from 50. 51 is 1 away. 48 is 2 away. And 50 is 0 away. And again, we have our distances so the last step is to calculate the average or the mean of those to get our mean absolute deviation. So pause the video once more and see if you can finish that one up for us. Okay, so you can double check your work here. So we added up all of our distances, divided by five, the amount of distances, and that would give us an, an MAD of 1.6 for this one. So if you got that, good job. That was our goal for this video. We're gonna look at a couple more examples. Um, so part 1C just wants us to look at um, which competitor has a greater variability, meaning spread out. So this is just a chance for you if you need to review quickly how to find IQR. Um, I'm just going to quickly pull up our answer key here so that you can see. Um, 
But here's what it would look like. Again, I always like to make the list of numbers instead of using the dots. Find your median, like for Michelle, it was 50. Break it into Q1 and Q3, just like we did yesterday. Um, and then you're going to subtract these two numbers. Okay, so the IQR for Michelle was 7, and IQR for Christina would be 4, right? Which would mean that Michelle has a greater variability in her scores, or in her throws. Okay, let's wrap up the video with one more example, game of 22. So in a minute, you're going to click a link, and you are going to draw three cards, right? The game is called 22. So what you're going to do is draw three cards at a time, add them up using all of their values here. So an ace is worth one, jack, queen, and king are all worth 10, and then cards two and 10 are just worth whatever number they have on them. Right, you're gonna add them up, we're gonna see an example, and we're gonna calculate the distance from 22. Right, and then we're gonna do that five rounds, and then get our mean absolute deviation. So you're gonna click this link, it should look like this, and I am going to click the card three times. So I got a six plus a two, so that's eight, plus a king, so that's 10. So total, we had 18 for that. So that would go in my first box. And again, the mean they're giving us for this problem is 22. So how far away from 22 is the number 18? Well, it's four away. So that's our distance from 22. Let's do one more round. So ace is one plus jack is 11, plus four would give us a total of 15 for that. So that would be my total for those three cards. 15 is seven numbers away from 22. So what you're going to do is do it three more times. Or actually, I would start fresh and use um, your own scores for those. But you're going to do a total of five rounds. And then once again, when you have your distances, right, you're going to take the, the mean of those and get your mean absolute deviation. Um, just as a quick example, I'll show you what mine looked like. So the, the five rounds, I got 23, 20, 15, 25, and 26. Those are the distances that each of those numbers are from 22, the name of the game. And then you just take the average of those five numbers to get your mean absolute deviation. So this will be one that you can finish off on your own and make sure you get your example done. So hopefully this, this video helped. Again, your three steps. First thing, you are finding the mean of the data set. Once you have that mean, you are figuring out how far away each number in the data set is from that mean. Find the distances, and then you're taking the average of the distances, and you'll be good to go. So thank you for watching, and I hope this helped.